So now I want to show you some of the layout options that are available to us when constructing our Android UIs. There's several different ones we can choose from, and we can actually mix and match several of these layout options inside one layout file. The reason why we might want to do this is because we may want to have our layout designed in one way that is easier for a particular aspect of that screen, and then in another way in an area of the screen that lends itself more to that. It's kind of nice to be able to mix and match these together. And the way that it, that can work is if you recall when we talked about the view tree that we could have view groups and those could be nested. Well, those layouts are typically view groups and we can nest those view groups together. Let me show you some examples of some of the layouts and it'll begin to make a lot more sense. So I have some sample code here that I got from the Android APIs that you can download from Google, um, some of the hello views. And I have a linear layout, and, and let's take a look at what that linear layout looks like. So when we look at this layout, you can see that actually it's a couple of linear layouts. It's actually three. We have a parent root linear layout that is vertically set up so that it contains two vertical elements, and those vertical elements are linear layouts. So we have this parent linear layout, this first child linear layout, and then this second child linear layout. And then within the first linear layout, we actually have some views that are in here, and this linear layout is horizontal. So all of the elements in here will take up one row horizontally. The same thing is happening with this second one, except this one is vertical. And so each element in here is taking up one row vertically. So this is kind of the use for a linear layout, is whenever you have something that you want to be able to divide your screen up into sections, you can nest linear layouts. That's one good way of thinking about it. I tend to use the linear layouts because it is something that I'm familiar with from doing a lot of web development. If you're familiar with the idea of wireframing or basically taking a web page and dividing it up into boxes or, or tables and subtables, it's kind of the same idea. You can do that same type of thing in, in Android. So let's take a look at this XML and see if we can understand what's going on. So if we look at this, it's just how we had talked about. We have a parent linear layout and then we have one child linear layout that starts here, and then a second child linear layout that starts here. And you can see that this first linear layout has an orientation of horizontal. And so all of these text views that are inside of it will be horizontal, which we can see right here. Then when we look at the second linear layout, this one has an orientation of vertical. So all of these rows, these text views inside here, will be vertical, which we can see. So that's really it for the linear layout. You'll probably use this one most commonly in your Android applications. Next, let's take a look at the relative layout. So I've got a relative layout that I'm gonna paste into here. And then let's take a look and see what that looks like. So this relative layout is something that you might commonly do when you're creating a form to submit or to get some data from a user. We have a text field here, and then we have two buttons. And the thing to note here is this cancel button. See how it's kind of offset from the text view and from the other button? Well, the relative layout lets you be able to do something like this because with the relative layout, what you're essentially doing is you're saying, how do these elements relate to each other? You can have an element be below something, above something, to the left of, to the right of. You use a syntax like that to specify where the things are laid out. And it, it can get kind of complicated and confusing, and you can have some contradictory things happen. So I really recommend using a relative layout for a simple thing like this. And when we look at this example code, you're going to see that really only the cancel button is, is doing anything interesting here. And that's just because you can end up making things so relative to each other that it's very hard to get it straight in, in your head. At least for me, I've found that, that that to be true. So let's look at this XML. And we can see here that we have a relative layout as our root. And then we have some text, a text view, an edit text, and two buttons. 
and this text view here, there's nothing really special going on here. It's just flowing. And what, what will happen in this relative layout is, notice we have a text view, and then we have an edit view. Well, we haven't specified anything relative at this point, and so what the default behavior is, is the text view, this element is going to take up one row, and then the edit view is going to take up the next row. And then we'll see that we have an OK button. And again, nothing really special going on here, except we see that we have an align parent right equals true. Now this is one of those special layouts that exists in the relative layout. So this instruction is making sure that this OK button is aligned inside of its parent all the way to the right. So that puts it over on this side. That's why we're seeing it here. Now, the interesting thing is this cancel button is, is on the same line. So let's figure out why is that happening. Well, when we look at the cancel button, we see two things here. We see a layout to the left of OK and align the top of OK. So if we look at this, we're seeing that, OK, so cancel is being aligned to the left of the OK, and it's aligned with the same top as the OK, and that's how it gets put here. So you can see how this can get fairly complicated and hard to wrap your mind around. If you had designed an entire UI with a lot of different widgets and you had them all being relative to each other in various different ways, it can definitely get confusing. So I, I recommend don't use the relative layout unless you absolutely need to, and then use a linear layout and perhaps put a relative layout inside it. Okay, the next layout that we're going to look at is actually a table layout. And let's put that code into here and let's take a look at it. So this layout actually presents everything in a, t in a tabular view, just like a, an HTML table or any other kind of table that, that you would use. We can see that what's going on here is we have different tables, or different rows, and different columns here. And it makes it a little easier to see when I turn off the grid lines on this one. What you can see here is we have you know open, save, save as, import, export, quit. And this is all just rows in a table. If we look at the XML that makes this up, it's pretty straightforward. This is about what I think most people would expect, is we have a layout table, and then we have table rows, just very similar to how you would do this in HTML. And then within each table row, we have some controls. So if we look at this, we have table layout, table row, text view, text view. And then if we look at how this is rendered, here's the first text view, here's the second text view. And this is all happening inside of this table, and each one of these is a row. So if we look further down, you can see that that is repeating. We have another table row, another table row, and then we're interrupted by a view that is basically just being used as a uh, line across, as a divider, and then the rest of the rows, and then one more divider. Now I want to show you one anti-view that you shouldn't use, and that is actually the absolute layout. So let's get rid of this table layout, and then we're going to throw an absolute layout into here. And I'll just show you real quick by dropping a button on here. So you can see how I can drag this button wherever I want. It seems kind of nice, makes it real easy. Uh, but there is a problem here. So if we look at this code, let's format this. You can see that what's happening here is this button is being explicitly put into an X and Y location. And this is kind of bad because, remember, Android devices can have lots of different resolutions. And if you explicitly say where the X and Y location of controls are and you lay, lay things out like that, it's not going to scale. Even though it's using device-independent pixels, it's not going to scale relative to each other. You're going to have a lot of problems. So I would try to avoid this as much as possible. I consider the absolute layout to be kind of an anti-pattern or an anti-layout. Now let's look at some of the other layouts. I'm not going to show them to you in Eclipse because they involve some actual code. It, it's not just the layout itself. It'll make more sense when we take a look at them. So the next one we're going to take a look at here is the list view. It's pretty simple, and it is something that you should probably recognize if you've ever used an application that has a preferences screen. The preferences screen actually uses a list view, and we're going to actually show that in a later module where we go over preferences. 
but essentially it is a view that will let you list a bunch of different items. What you end up doing when you create a list view is you end up implementing a special kind of activity called a list view activity, and then you pass it a list of things that you want to show in that view. So it's something that you're gonna use whenever you have some kind of screen where you're gonna pick something. If you think about like a phone dialer, like a contact list application where you're scrolling through a list of contacts, that's a place where a list view would make sense, things like that. Next, let's look at the grid view. So the grid view is a, another control that is very similar to a list view. And with this layout, it's gonna be the same type of thing. You're going to basically pass in a list of items that you're going to display in the grid. And instead, the really the only difference here is instead of displaying it all vertically down the screen, it's gonna have a grid of, and you can specify how big you want that grid, how many columns and rows. Very simple, another, another simple thing to implement. You just have to implement a special activity and then you populate this. There's some Java code that you have to do behind the scenes in order to bind that. But again, it's not that hard, but it's another option that's available to you when creating an Android UI. And then finally, the tab view. This one's a little bit more complicated. It's not that bad. It really is essentially creating a tab control and then you nest tabs inside this tab master control. The code behind for this, there's a few different ways you can do it. You can actually either swap out the views or specify the tabs directly in the XML. These are kind of a little more advanced Topic. So we're not going to go too much into depth into them here, but it's just good to know that you have these options. And then if you want to explore more into them, you can find plenty of information on them and we'll probably cover them in a more advanced Android UI course. So I tried to pick out most of the basic layouts that you would use typically in your Android application and some of the view options that were available to you. But we don't have enough time to cover all of the possible layouts and views that are available within the Android UI because it's rather large. So I wanted to make you aware though of what is out there so that you know and you don't end up rewriting something like a date or time picker control which could take you a long time but then there's a control for that. So let's take a quick rundown of all the ones that are available that we may have missed. And this is by no means a complete reference of all that are available. You want to look on the Android documentation to find out if there's something that you think should be there. It probably is there. It's, it's pretty large set of controls. So the first one is time and date picker controls. Those don't roll your own. It's already out there and they're pretty useful. So anytime you want to use a date or time, you can just pop up one of these controls and it'll let the user enter it. You can grab that inside your code. If you're looking for dropdowns, they're not called dropdowns in Android, they're called spinners, and they do have that. There is the autocomplete control, which has an API that makes it easy for you to do autocomplete, so you don't have to rewrite your own. A gallery control that makes it easy to have images and scroll through them. A frame layout, which is a layout we didn't talk about, but it's typically just used to display a single image. It's basically displays one view. And if you put more views in there, they'll be stacked on top of each other. And then there's a Google map view, which you can use to display a map on the page. Uh, you have to use a Google API key, but it's actually pretty simple to display a map and a point on that map. And then a web view where you can basically create a page that has an entire web browser page or web browser instance right inside your view. So those are pretty nice. Like I said, we don't have enough time to cover them all here. And if you need any help figuring out how to use these controls, I'd really recommend checking out the developer.android.com site where they have a lot of this documentation. And we'll probably cover a lot of these in some of the more advanced UI courses.